Um, I think it's actually right where it needs to be. Really? Yes, it's good. 293, my hope is built on nothing less. <laughs> Chapter 4, Daniel chapter 4. We're going to finish the chapter 4 out here and get into some exciting stuff next week. Daniel chapter 4. The beginning of the chapter is actually the conclusion of the chapter. As Nebuchadnezzar says, I went through this, I learned from it, I want to share it with you so you guys don't have to go through what I went through. Basically, hey, don't learn from your experiences. Learn from other people's mistakes. And uh, that's a lot of what the Bible is, is learning from the mistakes of the Old Testament so that we don't make the same mistakes. I read that this morning in, in Corinthians as I was studying it. I told you guys two weeks ago that three tips to avoid teaching moments. That you guys can learn from, number one, the Bible, the Word of God, studying the Scriptures, seeing what we should and should not do. I will gladly, I'm sure there are other folks in church as well, that will gladly spend time with you, to talk with you, to help you make wise decisions. All right? That is so, so important that we make wise decisions. So many people think they make choices. Help, ask God. God has put you in a place where there are many wise people that would gladly spend an hour talking with you. You just have to ask. Ask for God to give you some time to spend speaking with folks. Seek out the situation. Look at the situation. Nebuchadnezzar learned that. <clears throat> and I also told you guys that this. It's very funny to me how God tried to show himself and to get a hold of Nebuchadnezzar's heart. I think besides Pharaoh of Egypt, that there was no other king throughout history that God tried to change his heart. You know, we have a president today that we would absolutely love to have his heart changed. But folks, we've got to pray for that. We have to absolutely pray to God. God, please, would you work in his heart like you worked in Nebuchadnezzar's heart? Because let me just tell you, Nebuchadnezzar's heart was a whole lot more wicked than Joe Biden's heart was, is. And if God changed his heart, God could change Mr. Mr. Biden's heart. And we pray for that. But God gave many clues to Nebuchadnezzar. And I talked about how God wants to give these clues to you, to show himself to you, okay? To make you understand that God is just not somebody we pray to. God is not just somebody who was in the Old Testament or somebody hanging on the cross. God Almighty, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit of God are all alive and working today, right now, in this place and he has clues to show that. The first clue, of course, in his word. He speaks to us, and he shows himself through his word. He speaks to us, and he shows himself through his spirit, who he is. He shows himself through creation. Folks, creation screams out that there is a creator, that there is somebody who formed it. Okay? I don't care what organism it is. You look at that organism that is natural, and you say, that didn't happen by accident. That was put there by a creator. Okay? God gives clues through the church. In the church. With the church. Around God's people. In the services. God gives us clues and helps us understand who he is. To see his power and his presence. To see miracles. To see praises. You know, that's why praise time is such an important part of our worship service. 
where we get to see God working and blessing in somebody else's life. God shows his presence through history. I told you guys two passages of scriptures to where kings had records of God's dealings in the nation of Israel. And I showed you how there was um, there in the time when Paul was preaching. And he says, listen, I know that you know these things. You have record of it. You guys saw it yourself. This wasn't done in a corner. This wasn't some secret thing. And he says, listen, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. I know the events. I've seen the events. It is a historical fact that what Jesus did happen and the results of what Jesus' ministry showed. And he says, almost thou persuadest thou to me to be a Christian. Folks, I hope and pray that we'll understand God is real. And he shows himself in so many ways. And the more you get to know him, the better you're going to get to understand him, and the more you're going to trust him and obey him. This morning we're going to go into, basically as I titled it, so we have the conclusion of the king, we have the clues to the king, and the last one is the creature king. And this sounds, sounds like something straight out of a horror movie. This last week we went to Universal Studios in Hollywood with my son for his birthday, and got to see a lot of the movie sets and different things. You know, about, you know, creatures and all that. Uh, listen, <coughs> this, what we're about to read, sounds like it comes from Stephen King, from Steven Spielberg, but it's from God's word. God actually did this to King Nebuchadnezzar. And so Daniel chapter 4, verses 27 through 37, talks about the creature king and what God did to this man to humble him. It says, Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness, and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. If it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility, Daniel says to the king, Stop being prideful, be humble, be giving. <clears throat> it says that this came, and it, this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months, after Daniel preached to him, he walked to the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom of my might, my power, and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and the dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and set in time so it shall pass over thee, until thou hast known that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers, and his nails like bird's claws. At the end of the days, Nebuchadnezzar lifted up mine eyes into heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, and I blessed my understanding, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are re reputed as nothing, and he doth according to his will in the army of heaven, and amongst the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand, or say unto him, What doest thou? At the same time my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom my honor and brightness returned unto me. My counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom. And excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are true, and his ways judgment, and all those that walk in pride is able to abase. And this passage of scripture, folks, we see the creature king. Daniel came to Nebuchadnezzar and said, O king, would you stop being prideful? Would you humble yourself, please? If not, God is going to bring you down. He's going to turn you into a beast. Nebuchadnezzar would not be humble. Instead, Nebuchadnezzar got more proud. And as he got more proud, God said to him, Today, the punishment is going to come. Today, you are going to be humble in my sight, Nebuchadnezzar. And God turned Nebuchadnezzar into a beast. It says that his hair grew long. There were feathers. His nails turned into claws, and uh, people could come around in the uh, zoo there in Babylon and say, there's our king, Nebi. He's our favorite pet. We just love him, and give him a little bit of food, and give him a little, you know, something, and say, hey, it's good old King Nebi. I want you to look at him, and take, you know, I didn't have pictures, but uh, take a little drawing of him, whatever. Take a souvenir of the king, Nebi. You know, 
And Nebuchadnezzar had no idea what was going on. He was a beast in the field. He has understanding was taken from him. The Bible says after seven years, he awoke. After seven years, God began to speak to him. And at the very moment, Nebuchadnezzar said, you are Lord. You are mighty. And he extolled him and he worshipped him. And his heart was forever changed. You think, you would have think that that would have happened a long time ago. When Daniel revealed the dream to him, you'd think it had happened a long time ago when he saw the three Hebrew children thrown into the fire and not burned, but no, it took him to be turned into a beast before he would truly become a believer and a worshiper of the Lord God. And folks, I don't want you to have to go through what Nebuchadnezzar went through. I want you to learn who God is the easy way. God gives instructions. God gives us wisdom. So that we would have blessings. You make God honoring choices, your life will be blessed. Doesn't mean you're going to have a good life, but you will have a blessed life. And your life will be filled with joy. You make God honoring choices that honor the Lord, God will bless you. But folks, if you do not make God honoring choices, if you continue to rebel and turn your heart as Nebuchadnezzar did from God... God's going to punish you. He's going to humble you, just as he did Nebuchadnezzar. And my heart's desire, very quickly, in the next five minutes, is to help us understand the sin of pride. And that's the sin that Nebuchadnezzar was punished for, pride. <coughs> His pride lifted him up, and God said to him, you're not the king. You're not the king of the universe. I am. That's my position. And folks, so many times in our own life, we may never think, I'm the king of the universe, that may, wait, may think I'm the king of my castle, or I'm the queen of my street, or I'm the leader of my town, or I'm the most important person in my family, or I'm the hardest worker at my job. Every one of those is me, 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 I, 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 my, 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 and they're all prideful statements. And God says to us, folks, pride is wrong. Pride is, if not one of, most likely the most worst sin you could possibly be involved in. So many Christians today are so drawn away with other imaginations. Well, that's the most worst sin. and This is the worst sin you could be a part of. Listen, folks, it's very clear in Proverbs chapter 6. God says 6, verse 16 through 19. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination. A number one. Now, once again, I don't know if this list is an alphabet, if it's an importance. But I can tell you, it's on the list. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift to write into mischief, and a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. Folks, if there's not, if it's not the worst sin, it's one of the top seven sins that we could be involved in, anybody could be involved in. And I'm telling you, from the very beginning, I suffer and struggle with pride. I think there's something special about my flesh. I look at some of the things that I've done in my life and some of the things that have happened to me, and I say, ha, 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 I'm God's special. I'm God's favorite. And I have to be careful in my own life that I don't let pride slip in because pride is one of the worst sins that you could possibly have in your life. Number two, pride is what ruined creation. Satan in Isaiah 14, 12 through 15 the Bible says, And how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, O Satan, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? How hast thou said in thine heart, I will ascend to heaven? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. In the sides of the north, I will ascend above the, the heights of the clouds. I will be brought like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. To the sides of the pit. Satan said, I'm going to be bigger and stronger than God. And God said, no, you're going to be the least and the worst. And he threw them down from the heavens down to the earth. And we know the story from there. Satan found Eve. Eve found Adam. And they sinned against God. Where did that all start with? Pride. Pride from Satan is what ruined creation. It's why we have sin. It's why we have cancer. It's why we have death. Every single bad thing that happens in this world is because Satan lived in himself in pride, and he fooled us in his thing. 
Pride is what caused many nations to fall. I had six of these Bible verses. I cut them down for time. But pride is what caused many nations to fall. Hosea 5.5. 5. And the pride of Israel doth testify to his face. Therefore shall Israel and Ephraim fall in their iniquity. Judah also shall fall with them. Ezekiel 36. Thus saith the Lord, they also that pulled Egypt shall fall. And the pride, her power shall come down. For the tower of seen, they shall fall by it. By the sword, saith the Lord God. And I had six other verses I could have showed you. But nation after nation, kingdom after kingdom have fallen because of pride. And folks, America is in the same boat. America is very pride, very proud. Matter of fact, it's one of our greatest logos. America, the proud. Yeah. Folks, America needs to not be proud. America is nothing without the Lord. We are not a great nation because we are a great people. We are a great nation because we have a great God. We are no different than any other people on this planet. The only difference that America has is that we have a group of people who pray to him on Sundays and on Wednesdays and other times throughout the week. And God blesses this nation, not because we're a great people, because of our ethnicity, because of our knowledge, of our wisdom. America is a great nation because we have a great God. And folks, may we not be pride. May we not think we're something special. Because as soon as we think we're something special, God's going to show us who is in charge. <coughs> Folks, but humility. Humility is what brings God so much honor. Humility is what God blesses. Pride rejects God. It rebels against God. It is distasteful to God. And yet humility is what brings us close. Okay? Proverbs 8, 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy. And the evil way and the froward mouth that I hate. God says, if you want to have a great relationship, the fear of the Lord, what is the fear of the Lord? To hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth that I hate. Isaiah 57, 15 says, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in a high and holy place. To him also is of a contrite and humble spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite one. Who is it that God, the whole, high, and heavenly one is wanting to honor? The humble, the contrite. And folks, I can give you verse after verse after verse. You want to have a great relationship with the Lord. Humble yourself before him daily. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times a day. How many it takes? For you to say, God, I am nothing. You are everything. Everything I have is from you. All the good is from you, God. All the bad is from me. And I praise you, God, and I thank you. In our church, likewise, 1 Peter 5, 5 through 6. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves to the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and he may exalt you in due time. Folks, if we're going to have the blessings of God in our life, we've got to find ourselves humble before him. Understanding, God, every good thing you've given me is from you. And in our church, every good thing that happens is from who? God. Okay? It's not the pastor. It's not you. Every good thing that happens in our church is from the Lord. And we are no better than any one of us in this room. I'm no better than you. You're no better than me. We are all the same in God's eyes. We're all just children. And that's why he says, even from the youngest of us to the oldest of us, we can all learn and grow one from another. And I pray in our church that we will have a humble heart, a contrite heart to understand, God, you are so good, you are so great, and you are so wonderful. Because if we begin to lift ourselves up, he's going to bring us down like he did to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar says, I did this. This is for my glory. And God says, oh, really? Let me show you what you do. You get to go sit in the field and eat hay and look awful for seven years. And then Nebuchadnezzar said, oh, God, I was wrong. Please forgive me. You are almighty. You're all, all powerful. And I love you. Folks, may you not have to go through what Nebuchadnezzar went through. May you learn from his life and say, I don't want that to happen to me. I don't want to find myself in that situation. King Nebuchadnezzar learned the hard way. Many nations of leaders have learned the hard way. May you make it your life's goal to stay humble 
that you make it your life's goal to stay humble, that you will not glory in your flesh, who you are, what you can do, in your fortune, what God, what God has blessed you with, or your fame, the things that you've accomplished. May we always be quick to give God the glory when something goes well. And may we take the blame. It's my fault. Things are not going well. Things aren't going the way I wanted to. That's not his fault. That's my fault. When things go well, when God brings blessings, we give who the glory? God. He's the one. He's the one. When things don't go our way, when things begin to fall apart, it's not his fault. That's not our God. It's my fault. Whether it's my pride, whether it's my sin, God's trying to get a hold of my heart. And I humble myself and say, God, things aren't going well. Forgive me. I'm humbled. You have gotten my attention. Please help me to make wise choices, to consider, to be humble, to be, to be a blessing to other people. Nothing that ever is good has come from me. It's all come from you, Lord God. May we make our life's goal to stay humble. That's pray. God, thank you for the chance to study your word this morning in Sunday school. Thank you for the good group we have this morning. Lord, I pray you'll take this lesson and apply it to our hearts. Lord, give us a great service this morning as we lift you up again. Lord, I pray we'll have a great time of praise, a great time of prayer. Lord, I pray you'll give us a great time of the service. Bless you, Junior Church this morning. May you bring the young folks in. May you have a great time worshiping you. May you draw our hearts closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You dropped your phone on the other side. Thank you.